My quantum mechanics professor just posted our new homework assignment for quantum, and that gave me the idea that maybe I can start going over some of the previous assignments that we've been assigned in quantum. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you what quantum homework assignments look like. Keep in mind that this is my second semester of quantum, so this is technically called intermediate quantum mechanics. But I thought this would just give a little bit of a picture of the questions you'd be asked, and if you can't really understand uh, the thought process behind it yet because you haven't had quantum, at least you can sort of gauge the work that has to be put into it. So with that being said, let's get started. The first problem says that you can suppose the proton in a hydrogen atom is not a point-like object, but instead is described by uniform spherical charge distribution, and then it gives you charge E and some radius. First step is to use Gauss's law to derive an expression for the potential energy due to this finite sized proton. So normally in quantum what you do is you approximate the size of the proton as being uh, infinitely small, and that gives you an exact solution for your energy. This is saying if you don't make that approximation, find it's wanting us to eventually find the corrections to the energy. So the first problem if you've had any electrodynamics can be solved. You're not using quantum at all, it's purely just Gauss's law. And this is how I went about solving it. Here, uh, I, start with, I started with the definition of Gauss's law and really just plug and chug my way there. If you've had any E and M, this should be nothing too, prof too profound for you. You take into account uh, the potential that takes place if the radius is less than the radius of the proton, as well as outside. Uh, that gives me this term, the second term that is boxed, which gave me my potential energy, and that is actually the full part of question A. Nothing crazy there. B is actually even easier, because uh, B, uh, B tells you to, obs to obtain an expression for the perturbing Hamiltonian. Well, we already did most of the work here. Um, all that's going to happen is that we're going to use that potential energy due to the finite-sized proton, and we have to add the Coulomb potential in order to counteract the non-perturbing potential of the normal Coulomb potential. So we take our, so as you can see here, all that we have is that potential energy plus that correcting term that cancels out the minus Ke squared over R. That would be an H0. Okay, uh, so so far so good. So far this has been pretty easy. The next step gets, the next problem a little bit more algebra, a little bit more calculus. Next one says to find the first order corrections for different quantum numbers and find the shifts, find the values of these shifts in units of electron volts. Uh, and this is where, so that where I lost a point is actually not on the, not in the actual quantum mechanics of the problem, but rather, it's kind of embarrassing, but actually just plugging in the numbers gave me some wrong answers here and there. Uh, the note says that you can assume that big R is much less than the Bohr radius. That's what A sub zero is. And then below that, it gives you three different radio wave functions. Now, a light bulb went off when I saw this, and I said, that means that I can approximate all of these exponentials as a Taylor series, which means I can approximate all of these exponentials as polynomials. So when you find the correction to the energy for these different quantum numbers, it's as simple as just sandwiching your Hamiltonian in between your two wave functions and evaluating the integral. Now where this Taylor series thing gets useful is that we're integrating over three space. Okay, we're integrating in spherical coordinates, which tells you that there's going to be an r squared, a factor of r squared at least in all of these terms, because in spherical coordinates you have r squared sine theta. So that means that at the very least you have an r squared being multiplied by this e to the minus r over a0, which implies that you would have to use integration by parts at least twice for each of these. Keep in mind that the perturbing Hamiltonian also has factors of r for the given for the different wave functions, which just increases the number of times that you'd have to use integration by parts. So the fact that we could approximate this whole thing as polynomials makes it so that all we have to do is a bunch of power rules. And that's what I did, and that's why you see all of these terms here. And at the bottom I say that I just evaluated all this stuff in Python. 
which gave me a certain energy, and it's just the numbers that I put in. I was a little bit rushed for putting in the numbers, which gave me not not correct answers. Uh, I was told that the method was completely right, just rushed on putting in the numbers, and got got some stuff wrong. Next problem is exactly the same. The only difference, really, the only difference here is the wave function. We're just sandwiching in that wave function or we're putting the Hamiltonian in between that wave function and doing the exact same thing. So the trick was just to realize, oh, all you have to do is take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian three times for these three different sets of quantum numbers. And there was really nothing else to that. Um, here is the third page where we do it again for the third wave function, which is actually easier. So the second one was the so the second wave function was the one that had the most, I guess, algebra, just because if you distribute that exponentially, you have two terms. So it's just twice the amount of power rule, I guess. So this class so far has been really straightforward. It's been a lot of approximating, so it's been a lot of perturbation theory. It's been a lot of uh, very, or we're starting to get into variational methods, but it's a lot of what is the energy almost, and what is almost the wave function. Um, because in, I guess in the real world you don't always have these nice closed form things to work with so it's nice to show, so it's nice to learn how to work with things that are uglier, work with situations that are uglier. Two days from now I might be getting my quantum midterm back so I'm considering doing sort of the same thing here with that just to expose you to that exam uh, or maybe I'll just show what I got maybe people aren't too interested in seeing the questions Either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did, and I'll see you guys there.